Hi, this is Jonathan Gardner, and this is kind of a footnote, I guess, to um, what we're studying right now in thermal physics, which is ways of combining, ways of taking a certain energy level and counting the number of configurations that energy level can have at the atomic level, uh, the quantum mechanical level. So the last couple of videos, um, I kind of assumed that you understood how probabilities work, how we count things. I'm going to talk about permutations and combinations here. Uh, this is a field that I never really had much guidance. I don't think I was formally taught these principles. I just had to pick it up kind of on the fly as we studied stuff. So the first thing I want to talk about is I'm going to make this function called P of N. Okay, And what this function represents, it's the number of ways to order N items. All right, so like P of three, if you had three coins, three different coins that are distinct, and you wanted to count the number of ways you can organize those three coins, well, for the first possible coin, the first possible choice could be any of N options. And then the second one can be any of N minus one options. And then the third N minus two, and so on, all the way down to the last option, which is basically given to you. You don't have a choice anymore by the time you get to the end of the list. And so this we know as the factorial function, right? And so anytime you see a factorial, think of permutations of n items, okay? Now the next concept I wanna introduce is this other function. I'm gonna call it p of n comma k, right? Um, you might see this as n p k or p with the n on the top with the k on the bottom, something like that. But let's look at it this way. Let's think of it as a function. So what this does is this counts the number of ways to order k chosen items of n. Okay, And the formula for this, this is going to be n factorial all over n minus k factorial, which we can translate back to this. This is basically p of n over p of n minus k. Okay, What is going on here? Why is it working this way? Well, one way to think of this is this is the same as starting at n and then multiplying by n minus 1 and n minus 2. So you're choosing items basically, and you keep going until you get to n minus k plus 1. Okay, After that, there's no more there's no, you've already chosen k items. So there are k terms here, right? Not n terms. So we're not going all the way down to one. And so that's kind of like a partial factorial. And so one way we can represent that is just divide out the rest of the terms, the n minus k, n minus k minus one, n minus k minus two, all the way down to one, right? And so that's what that's doing. But really another way to think of this is if you take these n items and you list out all the possible combinations, that's what this, this right here, this is all combinations, or permutations, I should say, permutations of n items. Okay, and then you say, we actually don't need to list all of these out, right? The last n minus k items, they can be anything. We don't care, we're not gonna count them. We're gonna divide them out because we're not gonna count that many. And so really what this is, this is all the, the permutations of n minus k items which you might think of as the remainder, the items that you're not going to pick, right? And so that's one way to look at this P and K. Now let's talk about C, okay? C is the one that we've been dealing a lot with, and C is the number of, um, what's the right way to put this? Number of ways to choose K items of N where order is not important. And what I mean by order is not important, that means two comma three is the same as three comma two. Those are the identical in this way, right? And the reason why order isn't important arises often in quantum mechanics because you cannot distinguish the particles or the energy packets. There's no distinction, they're the same, right? So you don't know if you've put like the first bit of energy in the first state or in the second state, you can't tell, right? Because there's no distinguishing those energy packets, right? So the order is important. So basically what we're going to do here is we're going to start with P n of k, right? And so P n of k will give you the number of ways to order k items chosen of n. And we're going to say, and we're going to ignore the ordering of those k items. 
right? We're going to not double count or triple count or whatever that count is, but basically the number of ways that you can order the k items, we're not going to count that. And you end up with p of n over p of k times p of n minus k, okay? Which, you know, we write as n factorial over k factorial times n minus k factorial, okay? And this is probably the best way that I can explain this to you. Um, the only other thing that I can think of is to um, actually list things out. Like if you start dealing with problems, like one of the ways that really opened up these numbers to me and understanding the relationship with Pascal's triangle and all that kind of stuff is what, what I wanted to do in Dungeons and Dragons was I wanted to figure out if I rolled two d20s and chose the high one, right? And I worked it out. What if, what if we have n d20s? We rolled like a number of d20s and we want to choose the highest number, right? And so what I did is I, I figured, well, what if we wanted to get an 18, right? So the high number is going to be an 18. Well, that's just counting the number of ways to take. So you take one dice, it's rolling an 18. And how many other ways can you combine the other dice that are rolling 18 or lower, right? And so if I can count that number, then I can take the total number of combinations of all d20 dice and divide by that number and I'll get the result. So thinking like this is the kind of thinking you have to do with your probabilities and countings. And the other thing that, that you might run into is if you get familiar with these numbers, right? If you get familiar with Pascal's triangle, so when you see a six, a four, and a 10, you're like, oh, I've seen these numbers before. I know what this order is. Then what you can do is kind of reverse engineer Pascal's triangle and go back to the combinations and the permutations. Anyway, I don't know if this is helpful for you. If you have any questions or any better ways to explain this to a student that's just really coming to grasp with these things, um, I'm more than ears, more than open to hearing what you have to say. So guys, have a great day. Take care and bye-bye.